welcome to my channel thanks for stopping by so here at the moment I'm just laying down the first base layer just a thin coat of white just to get rid of the skin color and then I'll go on I'm moving on to the blue and it looks like I'm just placing it wherever I feel like which I kind of am I guess there's not really any science to it it's just a case of just laying down the colors and then layering over them a few times because I don't like to just have one stark color I don't like the contrast of that so I'll generally layer and layer and layer until I've got different colors peeking through So I want to mention the makeup that I'm wearing in the video, the eye makeup. Okay, so I had a plan. I thought I was going to do a big, bold cut crease eye, negative space. But no, when it came to the end, I just I just didn't like it, really. It's, um, I just wanted to incorporate the paint a bit more into my face. So I ended up just going over it and slapping some paint on. And uh, yeah, that was the end result. That's what happens when you keep changing your mind. Well, they do say it's a woman's prerogative to change her mind, right? And you can see I'm just repeating the same steps, just layering again, blending it back out again. It's all just to build up, really, the base. Uh, you don't need to be neat with this step. As you can see, I'm literally just slapping it down wherever I want the colour to be and then just blending it out again. You will also see me using my fingers to blend. I do that a lot, as I've seen. I've realised I didn't even know I did that until I watched this video back. But yeah, I, I don't know why I do that. I, I, I assume it's because I feel like I've got a bit more control about the placement, maybe, and how far it blends out, as opposed to using a sponge. You're going to start to see my hands probably looking disgusting and covered in paint <laughs> as the video goes on. Here I'm just adding bits of white all over the place just to bring the cloud forward. I know it doesn't look like it at the moment, but hopefully by the end it will. This is the start of the cliff. I just used the two colours, the blue and the black. Um, some parts are more watery than others. Again, just gives it more depth and makes it look a bit more uh, 3D, I guess. I'm using the white as well, of course, to highlight any areas to bring them forward. So anything you make lighter, just remember that will bring it forward and anything you make darker will recede back. This is me just making vertical lines down the side of the cliff face just to give it more 3D kind of look. Um, I'm using heavier strokes in some places than others. If I want a lighter area, then I'll just add more water so it's less opaque. And there's the finger smudging technique again. <laughs> When I made a start on the tree, I thought I knew where I was going with it and then it turned out I didn't know where I was going with it and I was just winging it in the end. Uh, the pink blossom, I really didn't like that at all. Um, the blue and yellow brush that I'm using, obviously it's locked down here in the UK and everywhere's closed. So I found this in the supermarket and I thought it'd be perfect for doing the trees because the bristles were sturdy. But... It turns out, no, they're not, and I didn't like, just didn't like it at all. But I think, hope, I managed to salvage it by the end. I do tend to spend some time just adding in small details like I'm doing here, but to be honest, by the end, I'm not sure you really need them. You could probably skip this step. A 
I always feel that once you place the highlight on the painting, that's when everything starts to really sort of come to life. And it's exactly the same with the darker contour colours. Once you've added that, it really adds the depth to the overall look of the picture. With any small detail work like this part here, I tend to sketch it really lightly with a brush first. And of course, don't forget I'm using water-based paint, so if I do it wrong, it's easy just to wash it off and start again. Just after this part actually is the part of the video that I had to cut out because I was sitting so close to the mirror to see what I was doing that actually that part of my body wasn't even in shot and of course by the time I've noticed it was too late. This is my toothbrush trick. Now I like to use this technique a lot actually, particularly when I'm doing horror makeup. I use it to flick the blood or I'll use it just to flick some black paint over a look if I'm doing something grungy and dark. Um, and here in this instance, I've used it just to flick some white stars into the background onto the skyline. I actually bought that toothbrush originally that you've just seen there for my dog Bruno. He is a 50 kilo Rottweiler and when he lets me know he does not want me to brush his teeth, you kind of have to listen. <laughs> oh well, his loss is my gain. So I'm just going back in just to replace those details that were lost when I was doing the blossom and the highlighting. Um, you always lose some in the blending so I'll always go back in and try to go back over it just before I finish. A lot of what I'm doing now from this point is just replacing details and just doing a bit more blending and adding uh, contrast and highlights. So. I'll leave you to watch in peace for a while. This is where I switch to the bright purple lip. That is just a sign that, you know, I just wasn't happy with what was going on with the face. So uh, this was my first attempt at changing it. And obviously I didn't keep this either. So it just shows how indecisive I really am. And that is it. Uh, I did actually add a few more finishing touches to the face and when I finished filming before I took my photos but you know I think you get the gist. Uh, thank you so so much for watching um, and I hope you come back again soon. Take care.